Good health to all from Rexall. It's the Phil Harris Alice Faye Show, presented by the makers of Rexall drug products and 10,000 independent Rexall family druggists. Good evening. This is your Rexall family druggist with a welcome from all 10,000 of us. The 10,000 independent druggists who have added the word Rexall to our own store names. You can always tell us by the orange and blue Rexall sign on our windows. But our best identification is that we carry the 2,000 or more drug products made by the Rexall Drug Company. Many of you are already faithful users of some of these famous products, like Rexall aspirin, for instance. Here is the aspirin that, by laboratory test, disintegrates faster than any other leading brand tested. Remember that the next time you need aspirin. And remember also, it's quality like that we family druggists are talking about when we tell you you can depend on any drug product that bears the name Rexall. Good health to all from Rexall. And now your Rexall family druggist brings you the Phil Harris Alice Faye Show, written by Ray Singer and Dick Chevrolet with Elliot Lewis, Walter Tetley, Robert North, Janine Roos, Ann Whitfield, Walter Sharp and his music, yours truly, Bill Foreman, and starring Alice Faye and Phil Harris. <laughs> Once a month, Alice's brother, William, goes over the various investments that he's made for her. Today is the day for his report. And as he explains Alice's financial holdings to her, Phil sits by in open-mouthed amazement. Uh, I don't quite understand this, Willie. Explain it to me once more. Very well. These are the dividends from your AT&T stock. These are the collections from your apartment building. All this is interest from your government bonds. Philip stopped drooling. <laughs> Getting Alice's money all wet. Oh, 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 forgive me, Alice. I wouldn't want you running in and out of Safeway with a mess of soggy $100 bills. Oh, Phil, stop making up big things about my money. I happen to have a few dollars invested. If you had done that with the $200 you had last week, you wouldn't have lost it. What are you talking about? I invested that money very wisely. I stayed up a couple of nights figuring out all of the angles, went over the whole proposition carefully. Then how come you lost it? Well, how did I know the jockey was going to fall off in the stretch? <laughs> why don't you invest in some good stocks? Or, or why don't you buy a little business? Yeah, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. It's a good way to lose your shirt buying into a business and you don't know nothing about it. Well, then go into something that you know about. Yeah. Yeah, uh-huh. that might be all right. Quiet now while I think of something I know all about. <laughs> there's, um... Well, there's, um... It seems like a splendid opportunity to take a nap. <laughs> Go ahead, Willie. I'll nudge you if he comes up with something. Oh, get a load of Milton Berle and her mother. <laughs> Why don't you let me advise you on a, on a business? Yeah, because I don't want any advice from you on a business. That's why I got plenty of intellectual friends to advise me. Like Frankie, I suppose. Well, what's wrong with Frankie's intellect? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing that a cut-rate brain surgeon couldn't correct with a dull knife and fork. <laughs> now, leave Remley alone. Remley's no dope. That kid's got a good head on his shoulders. And the one he carries under his arm ain't bad. <laughs> Philip, if you let Francis advise you, you're making a big mistake. Why, he's stupid. He is not stupid. He's just as smart as I am. <laughs> let me tell you something, Willie. You'd be surprised at how much Frankie knows. Why, Frankie can take any bottle of patent medicine and tell you exactly how much alcohol is in it. <laughs> There's a lot of other important things like that that he knows. You'd be amazed. Don't worry. I'll get that. Hi. Hiya, Frankie. Curly, did you know that if you dissolve an aspirin in a gallon of rubbing alcohol and let it soak into your chest for two and a half hours, you can get a hangover without a headache? <laughs> Just been 
telling them about you. That's what. <laughs> yes, sir. You see, Willie and me just had an argument, Frankie. He said that you're stupid, but I defended you. I said you're just as smart as I am. What kind of a defense is that? <laughs> But Frankie, I Willie told... only said I'm stupid. You got me in a moron bracket. <laughs> you hurt my feelings, Curly. I feel I'm smarter than you, and if you're going to go around saying... All right, all right, all right. I apologize. All right. You're smarter than I am. That's why I... I want to ask your advice. My advice? About what? Well, um, you see, Frankie, I... I saved a little money up and, and, well, Willie thinks that I should invest it in something, but, but, well, I thought I'd talk to you first. A wise move. <laughs> How much have you got to invest? Shh, not so loud, Remley. I don't want Alice to know about this, but I got, uh, Five hundred bucks stashed away. Where have you got it? Pinned to my undershirt. <laughs> <laughs> Willie wants me to invest it in AT&T. Well, that's a good stock, but hardly the thing for a man like you, Curly. Don't like it, huh? No, you need something more active. <laughs> I'd suggest you put your money into RSFBB. R... S-F-B-B? Yeah. The Remley Slush Fund for Bucks and Blondes. <laughs> it's a holding company. <laughs> Great stop. Oh, Remley, will you stop with that ridiculous... You pay dividends? <laughs> now, look. Frankie, mm. I better put my money into something more substantial, like some kind of... some kind of business, maybe. Business, huh? Curly, how would you like to finance my Uncle Eddie, the inventor? He invented a household gadget No, that... no, 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 no. If I want to finance any inventors, I'll back my own relatives. See, my Uncle John is pretty good at that stuff, too. <laughs> <laughs> your uncle ever invent? I'm glad you asked that. <laughs> he invented the greatest can opener I've ever seen. It's a combination pile driver and brush. How's it work? Like a charm. Now, you put a can of beans on the table, press a button, and the pile driver comes down and flattens the can. What's the brush for? To scrape the beans off the wall. <laughs> Let's see your uncle top that. <laughs> you think he can, huh? My uncle invented a three-dollar bill that all you couldn't... Right, all right, all right. <laughs> Let's not milk it, huh? Now, look, Remley, I want to invest the 500 in something that I know about, and if you come up with an idea, then I'm going to cut you in for part of it. Okay. Look, Curly, why don't you invest in something that has to do with show business? Buy a part interest in a burlesque house or a secondhand strip teaser. <laughs> How about a radio station? Or better yet, something to do with television. That's it. The strip teaser, huh? No. <laughs> <laughs> television. Oh. Why, that television, can't you see it? That's the greatest thing to hit show business since buttered popcorn. <laughs> now, if I could invest in a small television station... Well, if that's then... what you want, I can help you. Bill Zachary owns a small television station in the valley, and I think I can get him to sell you some stock in it. Oh, thanks, Frankie, can you? Sure. Well, listen, you go over and talk to him, and then... Hey, wait a minute. What's... Hold a minute. What? Well, maybe you better take my 500 with you. You see, in case he agrees to sell, I want to get in on it before he changes his mind. Well, all right, give me the dough. Okay. <laughs> Close your eyes while I unfasten the pen. <laughs> Hey, look, Remley, now if that guy agrees to let me in on it, good. But remember, I don't want anything else but television. No, you leave it to me. I'll see you a little later, Curly. All right, so long. I gotta go in and tell Alice. Oh, boy, if I can get in on the television deal, I'm all set. 
I'll show Alice I'm just as smart as her stupid brother. <laughs> hey, honey, I got news for you. I just made a... Oh, shucks. I'll have to wait. She's about to sing to her brother, Willie. You're the cream in my coffee. You're the salt in my stew. You will always be my necessity. I'd be lost without you. You're the starch in my collar. You're the lace in my shoe. You will always be my necessity. I'd be lost without you. Most men tell love tales, and each phrase does tell. You've heard each known way. This way is my own way. You're the sail of my love boat. You're the captain and crew. You will always be my necessity. I'd be lost without you. We're not the poets. How well we know it. We've never been great ravers. But when we speak of you, we rave a bit. It's true. Oh, fellas. Our heads are turning. And just from learning your estimation of us. What sugar does for tea. That's what you do to me. Cause you give life savor, bring out each flavor. So this is clear, dear. You're my worst dear, dear. You're the sail of my love boat. You're the captain and crew. You will always be my necessity. I'd be lost without you. Well, honey, look, I got good news for you, Alice. See, I've decided to buy uh, an interest in, uh, in a television station. Oh, Phil, that's a wonderful investment. How many shares are you buying? Well, I don't know yet. See, I, I really don't know, but I, I gave my contact man the money, and he's out closing the deal for me now. Oh. <laughs> uh, who's your contact man? Uh, Frankie. <laughs> oh, no. No. No, 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 no. <laughs> Pounding your head against the wall. <laughs> You're making the pictures all crooked. Oh, Phil, you should know better than to let Frankie make any investment for you. But, honey, this is legitimate. Frankie doesn't know anybody legitimate. <laughs> You're always falling for Frankie's line, and this but time honey, I'm I... going to put a stop to it. Well, I'm not. You know what he's like. Oh, he's. Do good... you remember the time he bought you that leaky boat? Yeah, but I. Or could... the time he bought you that sway well, back horse? Well, we still horse. got the horse. Or the time he bought you that hot. Well, honey, I never. Oh, the time he bought you that second-hand Greyhound bus Or the time he bought you that boxer kangaroo Or the time he bought you that... Honey, please! (laughs) (laughs) You've been going on like this for four hours Now lay off, will you? (laughs) I keep telling you this time Remley's on the level He explained to me that the... That's him now Come in Here I am, Curly Well, lay that good news on me I did it again. <laughs> you are now in television. Oh, you baby boy. <laughs> you see, your district attorney? <laughs> hey, Ronnie, how many shares did you get me in that station, kid? Well, I didn't exactly get your shares in the station, but I bought you something even better. I bought you the biggest thing in television. Well, what did you buy me? A 260-pound wrestler... <laughs> Remley, how could you do such so- Alice, stop that You're making the pictures crooked again <laughs> This is a great investment Oh, sure, great investment $500 for a rascal I didn't pay $500 oh, you. I got him for $250 Five. Just think, a 260-pound wrestler For $250 <laughs> That's less than a dollar a pound. <laughs> you got his contract for a whole year, you'll make a fortune. Wrestlers and cowboys are the biggest things in television. Remley, I don't want no wrestler. I can buy you a cowboy, but they run a little higher. <laughs> They're two dollars a pound, and they insist on weighing in with their horses. <laughs> what does this wrestler look like? Well, I don't know. He looks like I haven't seen him yet. 
But if we get down to the gym, we can see him now. He's training for a bout tonight. Is he any good? He's great. To show you how much I think of him, I bet $250 that he'll win tonight. You did? <laughs> hey, where'd you get the $250? That's your change from the $500. <laughs> stop, stop, don't get excited. The masked mangler cannot lose. Masked mangler? Yeah, that's his name. He wears a mask and a long cape. Oh. Oh, Renly. Well, with all that dough I got invested in him, I better go down to that gym and take a look at the mang. Well, I'll get my hat and go with you. Alice. <laughs> now, wait a minute, honey. You don't want to go down there. There's a lot of rough, illiterate, punch-drunk guys around there. You're not accustomed to such characters. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> your band rehearsals all the time, don't I? True. I guess you'll be all right. Come on. Hey, look at them go, huh? Yeah. I love it down here, don't you? Ah, it's wonderful. Yeah. Hey, Remley. A lot of rough characters in this gym. Sure glad I left Alice and made her wait outside. Oh, yeah. It's certainly a crude-looking group. I'm glad we don't have to associate with these low creatures. Thank goodness our associates come from a higher strata of society. <laughs> oh, there you are, Frankie. <laughs> what are you going to pay me the three bucks you owe me? Hey, Rem, who's the Deb? <laughs> He's my doctor. Oh. <laughs> he trains here for all his operations. <laughs> hey, Curly, look. Look at the guy in the ring with the mask on. That must be our boy. Yeah. <coughs> hey, look at the size of that guy. Yeah. <laughs> He's tremendous, ain't he? Hey, Remley, I think this time we got some. Yeah. Come on, let's go over and watch while he mixes with that other guy. Yeah. <gasps> Sounds like a great wrestler. <laughs> Remley, you sure you didn't buy me a seal? <laughs> well, they all grunt like that. Hey, Curly, look at the form on the mangler. No, He's got I a great like stranglehold no, no, on the no, other no, I don't like it, I'm trying to tell you. He ain't doing it right. I better get him straight, too. Hey, you up there. Hey, Mang. Hey, break it up, will you? Break Wait it up up there. Wait a huh? minute, bud. What's the idea of telling my boy to stop wrestling? What do you mean, your boy? That's the masked mangler, ain't it? No, this is the hooded terror. <laughs> oh, oh, the hooded guy. Oh, well, I'm sorry, mister. I thought, uh, I thought that was my wrestler. See, uh, I just, uh, I just bought the, uh, masked mangler. You bought the masked man? Yeah. <laughs> 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 The best man! <laughs> what the heck's he laughing about? All I said was the masked mangler, he gets hysterical. Must be a funny word like Cocker Spaniel or Brooklyn or something. <laughs> well, never mind him. Let's go find our boy. Hey, Mushy, where's the masked mangler? Duh, right in that ring over there. Duh, thanks. <laughs> I didn't know you spoke the language that well. <laughs> yeah, well, come on, Curly. Let's go over and see the mangler. <coughs> oh, look, yeah. Yeah, there he is right there. Hey, Frankie, look. Hey, he's taking his robe off. At last, we're going to see what he looks like. Yeah. Hey, Curly, get a load of that physique. I never saw a guy built like that before. I never saw a guy built like that before either. I've seen dames built like that, but... Dame! <laughs> oh, Frankie, the mangler's a woman. Well, well, there must be a mistake, girl. It better be. I'm going to find out. Hey, uh, hey, uh, hey, lady. What do you want, shorty? <laughs> Would you mind telling me your name? Not at all. They call me the Masked Mangler, but you can call me Myrtle. <laughs> Myrtle? She looks more like Clyde. <laughs> Hey, Myrtle, what's your last name? Majerski. I didn't know Bronco had a brother, did you? <laughs> Say, uh, look, lady. What's on your mind, handsome? 
<laughs> You'll be all right. Say, uh, 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 my name is uh, Phil Harris. Uh, I'm your uh, new owner. Well, this promises to be a happy association. Ha! You want to wrestle, cutie? Well, uh, couldn't we just shake hands? Well, if you insist, shake. Ow! Oh, oh. Let go, you bully. What are you trying to do? Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Did it hurt your little hands? Oh, no, no. I always carry my fingers around in a little bunch like this. <laughs> Look, Mert, we got to have a little talk. You see, I'm the guy... What's taking you so long? What have you been doing? Alice, uh, honey, I... Uh, I want you to meet the masked mangler. This is... Phil, this is a woman. Isn't it? <laughs> uh, yeah, uh... This is... This is my wrestler. Oh, no. No! No, no, no! Alice! <laughs> stop banging your head against the ring post. You want to loosen the ropes? <laughs> what do you want to do, get stupid or something? <laughs> to get rid of her, Phil. I got a better idea, Curly. Let's get rid of the blonde. <laughs> now, just a moment. This man happens to belong to me. Well, now, calm down. Tell you what we'll do, sister. We'll settle this like ladies. I'll wrestle you for him. <laughs> he falls out of three. Hey, just like old times, got two women fighting over me. <laughs> When you get in the ring with her, throw an arm lock on her and put the... <laughs> oh, no, I'm not getting in the ring with anybody. Phil, I insist you get rid of this wrestler. He can't. He got a year's contract with her. Look, Curly, just because she's a woman don't mean she can't wrestle. Let's test her. I'll get you a pair of trunks and you get in the ring Hold with her. Hold on. <laughs> I ain't getting to no ring with her. You get in with her. Curly, I can't do that. I'm a man and she's a woman. It wouldn't be a fair match. She's liable to kill me. <laughs> Alice, if I can find a pair of trunks to fit you... No! <laughs> Poor Curly, married to a coward. <laughs> well, if nobody will wrestle her, I guess I'll have to. Good boy, Frankie. Hey, Mert, you think you can handle him? Handle him? Ha! Take your coat off and climb up in the ring, small fry. Hi, Mr. Harris. Now, what are you doing here, Julius? I come down to see your wrestler. Where is he? Right up there. The one in the tights. <laughs> this is a wrestler? <laughs> Looks more like an untidy pile of chopped liver. <laughs> This happens to be a female. Female what? <laughs> a female woman. Careful what you say, Mac. You're speaking of the sex my mother belongs to. <laughs> say, who is this handsome little boy? Come here, son. You're the cutest little rascal I've ever... Wait, pat me on the head, you pound me into the floor. <laughs> Be quiet, will you, Julia? We got something important to do. <laughs> All right, Bram, get started. Now, don't hurt that little lady. I'll try to be gentle. <laughs> All right, Mert, I'm ready. Come and get it. Here I come. <laughs> hey, she threw him right out of the ring. I don't believe it. Let me see you do that again, lady. <laughs> All right, this time I'll throw him back in the ring. <laughs> Hey, look at the bounce. This gal's sensational. I saw it, but I still don't believe it. Once more, lady. <laughs> okay, I'll throw him out again. Don't strain yourself. I'll throw myself out. Oh. Hey, man, this dame is terrific. If she wrestles for us, we'll make a fortune with her. Yeah, we're going to need it to give me a decent burial. <laughs> we'll make a fortune except for one thing. Women ain't allowed to wrestle in California. They ain't allowed... But I got my money. I got 500. I... Miss Nagurski, is this true? Yes, it is, Curly. That's why I'm a manager, soldier, I'm a contract. But I... Oh, maybe it's just as well, Phil. Oh. It cost you 500, but you're free of her. Well, 
I guess so. All right, let's get out of here. So long, Mert. It's been nice knowing you, Mert. Not so fast. We got a contract. You're my master for a whole year, Curly. I like you boys, and I'm sticking with you. <laughs> Shall we go home? And don't you worry, I won't cause you no trouble. I do everything I can for you fellas. <laughs> Think we can get enough meat to feed her? <laughs> All right, come on. Gee, what a day. All this has tired me out. You're I... tired. What about me? <laughs> you almost broke my back throwing me out of the ring. I can barely walk. I don't know if I'll be able to make it to the car. Myrtle, put me down! <laughs> okay, do you want me to put you down too, Mr. Harris? No! You cost me 500 and I'm going to get something for my money. You're taking me home. Climb up here, Alice. You can drive. Get up. <laughs> Alice and Phil will be back in just a moment. But right now, our Rexall family druggist has a customer. What's the name of that Rexall antacid you sold me a little while back? You must mean Bismarex, ma'am. Bismarex, that's it. I don't think I've ever found faster relief for acid indigestion. That's because Bismarex works like a team in a relay race. Like a relay race? Mm -hmm. well, what on earth do you mean? Well, the carefully balanced ingredients in Bismarex vary in the time required for solubility, so that each one works in sequence like a four-man relay race. I get it. One ingredient starts in where the other leaves off. That's it. The first man, or ingredient, promptly relieves the heartburn that comes from food fermentation in the stomach. The next one races to neutralize hyperacidity. The third one eases gastric distress. And the finished man leaves a soothing, protective covering for irritated stomach membranes. No wonder Bismarex gives such fast relief. Well, ma'am, that kind of quality applies to all of Rexall's 2,000 or more drug products. And that's why 10,000 family druggists will tell you you can depend on any drug product that bears the name Rexall. Good health to all from Rexall. <laughs> Hmm? The things you get Phil into. Now we have a female wrestler living with us. Well, don't blame me. It's Curly's fault. <laughs> he should have listened to my first suggestion and invested in my Uncle Eddie, the inventor. Ah, stop already with the uncle. Your uncle never invented nothing. He didn't, huh? Twenty years ago, he discovered the greatest kitchen aid in the world. This thing washes the dishes, dries them, scrubs the floor, does the cooking. That sounds like a great gadget. What's he call it? My aunt. Oh. <laughs> this program was produced and directed by Paul Phillips. Included in today's cast were Martha Wentworth and Alan Reed. The part of Frankie Remley was played by Elliot Lewis, and Julius was played by Walter Tetley. Alice Fay appeared through the courtesy of 20th Century Fox. When you have increased susceptibility to colds due to lack of vitamins, take Plenamins, Rexall's famous multivitamin capsules. Two Plenamin capsules a day give you more than the daily minimum requirements of every vitamin for which, such, for which such requirements have been established, plus valuable concentrates of liver and iron. Ask for Plenamins at the store with the orange and blue Rexall sign on the window. And remember, you can depend on any drug product that bears the name Rexall. Sam Spade, then Ray Milland on Theater Guild, follow immediately on NBC.